Hey everybody, welcome back to another Entity Framework Core video. In the last video, which isn't actually out yet, but when it is, uh, you'll hopefully know what I'm talking about because hopefully you watched it. If not, I recommend checking it out. But in the last video, we just updated in the code uh, in the ASP.NET Core web application in an action in the home controller. We just updated a row in our SQLite database using Entity Framework Core. And then what I decided to do is I decided to split up videos like these to just do it in the code real quick in a video like this for people that need to know it in a pinch and just want to learn it real quickly and then make a second video to follow up actually showing it in use in an example application, which is what we're going to do uh, in this video. So if you like this kind of stuff, by the way, don't forget to hit subscribe. Really appreciate all the subscribers recently. And uh, this channel is just me learning new coding things and sharing them with you guys and hopefully you guys at least learn something out of these. But if you haven't been following along, what we did is we started a little series where we made an ASP.NET Core web application. And I can show you that. And here's our database that NDD Framework built for us. It defined, well, we defined it in a class and then we had NDD Framework do the rest. It built this, this database table and uh, then we had NDD Framework insert values into this table. And then in the last video, we updated uh, the age of a particular row. So let's go check out our application. Um, let's go back to the controller. There it is. And here's what we did. We just take a user and we use Entity Framework and say where user ID is equal to one and we set the age to 18 and we save the changes. So we didn't actually do anything in the UI and that's where I want this video to be different is I want to have the user click a button on the particular row that they want to update and we can send them to a different view and they can see all the, the current data for the user and they can change it as they need to. So in case you're just starting watching these, let's, uh, Let's just pull up the web application just so you know what I'm talking about. So we go to the add users tab here. Here's a table that ND framework grabs all the data for us and puts it in different objects and uh, in a list of objects. And then we display it in a nice little table like this. And I just want to have a button on the end of each row. It says update. You hit it and it takes you to a different view where you can edit different attributes as you need to. So what I want to do is I want to pass in instead of nothing a user model. Now let's call it user. And then let's call this uh, user temp, maybe. Because if we don't, it's going to conflict and not compile. So let's go back to our CSHTML. And here's the table that it creates. And then at the very end, like I said, I want to have a button. And the best way that I found that I could do this in my test application when I was, I was trying this out is a form and a table data tag. So you can actually do this. You can put a form here. So let's do just that. And then the ASP action, we're going to use some .NET Core things, is going to be update. Wow. Can't, uh, can't type again. Seems to be a recurring theme. ASP controller is going to be our home controller. And the method is going to be post. And then what I want to do is I want to pass in this form the ID of the user that we're displaying. Because we're using a for each loop. We're going through each one displaying it. And I want to pass in the ID when the user hits the update button. So we can retrieve all of the data from the database and then display the ones that we want the, the user to be able to edit. So I'm going to, I don't know why it didn't. Tab for us, uh, I want to put an input field and type is actually going to be hidden. We don't want the user to see this. Instead of name, we're going to do ASP4. This is going to be ID for the ID property of our user model. And the value is actually going to be at user because we're looping through the users and each one we're naming user. User.id is going to be the value. And then below that, we'll put a button. Uh, type is going to be submit. And then this is going to say update. And we can give it some styling too. So it looks kind of decent. Let's give it a class, a bootstrap class. Let's say button. 
and then button success, which is the green one. So let's just see if that does anything. Let's run it. And it looks like it compiled okay. And there you go, now we have a button. And if we hit this, let's see if our breakpoint's still there. Yeah, if we hit this, I wanna see if the ID comes over. So let's try to find it. Here's the first one. So if we hit this, ID should be equal to one. Let's hover over user. Uh, everything else is either zero or null, but we at least we have ID. And that's where this comes into play. We can use any framework to give us uh, the one that we're looking for since we have the ID where ID is equal to, and then we can pass in user.id. So let's do that. So ID is equal to user.id. So it'll grab all the other information for that, that record. Um, and then we're not actually gonna update anything yet. And we're not going to save. And just so we have it kind of organized, let's put HTTP post at the top of this as an annotation. Uh, so we denote that this action is a post method. Okay, and then like before, let's do temp data. We talked about this in a couple videos back where temp data is kind of like a view bag, but you can go through different views. And once you retrieve it once, it just deletes it from the temp data. So you can only read from it once. So temp data, let's call it user at, no, uh, user temp, yeah, that's fine. Is going to be equal to user temp. Okay, and instead of how we did in the last video where we just sent the user back to the add users view, let's just send it to the update user view, which doesn't exist yet, but we can make that really quick. So let's save that. And I think everything's in order now. If not, we'll come back and fix it as we always seem to do. And let's open up views, the home folder, and then let's add a new view and call this update user, just like the action name. Hit add, and then at the very top, I want to denote what kind of model that we're using. So we're using the efdemo.models.usermodel in this view. And then here, I can actually just copy um, the first form in our add users. So let's just copy this whole thing. I think this will be okay. And here we go, we have the four main things that when we added a user that we asked for, and now we can just kind of reuse this. And let's go ahead and also make a variable up here. Let's call this user model. User model, uh, user is equal to temp data and user, or no, lowercase t, temp data. I think that's how we spelled it. Let's make sure. User temp, that was it. As user model. Okay, so I think the only thing I need to do is for each input, I just want to put value is equal to uh, our new user model, user or user object user, and say the value for this one, since this is the email, it's user.email. And let's copy and just paste this for each one. So this one's going to be user.name. This one's going to be value is user.username. And then the last one is going to be value is user.age, right? So now it'll have a value actually in the text box for us already case we don't really want to update it, it's already there. So the only thing now is the action. Um, we're not using the add users anymore, we're updating. We already have a method called update users, or update user. So let's create another one. I'm gonna call this update user final, and this is gonna take in a user model. We're gonna call it user again. Oh, and one more thing I guess I want to do is somewhere in here, I want to do like we did in the table and 
have a input type hidden. Uh, and then we can say ASP ASP for ID value is going to be at user dot ID. Cool. So now we can say using var db equals new demo context. We can say var uh, update user is equal to db dot users dot where. Then another lambda expression u um, where u dot id is equal to user dot id dot first or default. And then here we can say update user dot name is going to be equal to the new user that we passed in user dot name. And then we can do the rest like uh, email age and what was the other one username. And the thing is, if we didn't actually change it in the form, then nothing's going to change, but we're just covering all bases just in case. So update user dot username is equal to user dot username. Update user dot age is equal to user dot age. And then update user dot email is equal to user dot email. And those are the four in the form. And then here we can say db dot save changes. Okay. So I think this will work. We'll find out. Uh, now let's just return the view of um, add users, I guess, or add users, add user, add users. So let's walk through this and make sure this even works from the beginning. So I have a breakpoint right here. Let's see if this works. Okay, so I'm gonna go to add users and let's just edit this one. And let's say we wanna change the age because it still has zero. So we'll hit update, uh, it reaches this point. Let's make sure it has ID of two, which is correct. And let's just walk through by hitting F11. And this is going to search our database and hopefully it grabs all of the info. Yep, looks good. It adds it to the temp data and then returns the view of update user that we created. So. We hit F11, here we go. And for some reason it's showing all this, we can get rid of the validation, but let's just see if when we change this to 17 and hit submit, if it updates. So actually let's go back, put a breakpoint right here so we can walk through it again and just make sure everything works. So let's hit submit. Oh, my bad, yeah, I forgot. I forgot to change the action in our form. It's inevitable that I do something wrong. So I talked about uh, changing it, but I, I didn't actually change the action name. So it was going back to the add users action. Uh, so now let's run this again. Add users, we'll update the second one. Uh, we know this part works. Here we go, let's change this to 17, hit submit. All right, and invoke this, and let's just make sure everything's here. And here you go, you can see the new age is 17 and the rest is how it was before. And it says, give me the one where ID is equal to two, and let's make sure it does that. And here you can say age is zero. So sooner or later, we're going to see uh, right here, Hopefully we'll see age turn to 17 and then we'll save it and then watch in the database. Let me just refresh to show you nothing happened yet. And then once it saves, let's make sure everything uh, still looks the same. Yeah, except for age, it got updated. So let's save it. It's supposedly saved and then if we refresh, 
boom, you can see age just updated to 17 for this one. I'll hit continue. And it just took us back to the add users view. So now we have an application where each row has its own button and it's allocated to that particular row. And if we wanted to update this, uh, let's get this breakpoint out. There, now we can look at Joseph, his information and change it as we need to. Um, I could get rid of this, but I don't really think it's necessary right now. This is just a demo app. And uh, I think you guys hopefully got out of this everything um, that you need to. And uh, that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something useful in this video. And uh, I hope to see you in the next one.